Well, we are at a different location than our usual. What a stunning venue. We are at Winter Gardens Theatre about to sit down for a nice chat with Jonathan Antoine. Simon Cowell said you are unbelievable to this brilliant dynamic singer in 2012 when he was 17 years old only and a contestant on Britain Got Talent. Simon then noted that his voice sounded as good as Luciano Pavarotti and that he has not heard such a wonderful operatic, operatic voice in a long time. He's in Toronto performing a concert at uh, this historical theater. Now at the age of 24, UK's tenor Jonathan Antoine is considered one of the most beautiful voices in the world. Come with me, join me on this special episode of On the Couch, On the Road. Jonathan, it's yeah. an absolute pleasure to talk oh, to you. Pleasure to meet you. Thank hey, you. Hey. I, uh, I've been wowed by your edition, like millions Thank around you. the world. Uh, I've been inspired by your story since then. Thank you very much. And I've been much. really enjoying the lovely work that you're creating. Oh, well, thank you. Well, <laughs> I really um, appreciate that. Let's, let's take our viewers on a journey of getting to know you. And to do that, to do that let's start from the very beginning. Okay. How did you fall in love with music? Um, did you always like opera? Did you sing anything else first? How did it all start for you? Well, ever since I was a child, I kind of sang along to whatever was on the radio, really. So my beginnings are very humble in that sense. I just, um, you know, the 90s pop, the Spice Girls, things like that. That's, that's, <laughs> that's the, uh, the true origins. Okay. <laughs> but um, when I was, I think, 11, uh, when I first entered high school in the UK, we have it a little bit different over okay. there. Um, I started taking singing lessons because I'd kind of been encouraged generally by um, my teachers in primary school, as we call it over there again. Nice. Um, yeah, and I just I just never stopped. <laughs> and then you so, met your friend Charlotte. I did uh, in uh, in that same school. Okay. And eventually we auditioned. That's how you connected. Show, yeah, okay. pretty much. And and then you and her had that very famous audition that yeah. everybody talks about. Uh, let's talk about the audition. Sure. Uh, what do you remember of that day? Getting ready, going on stage, seeing the audience and, and the I, judges' reaction. All I that. remember every detail of that must, day intimately. Must, yeah. <laughs> it was, Share it. It's closer, you know, closer to a decade ago now than uh -huh. it's not. Um, but yeah, I still remember it crystal clear. I remember. Were you nervous? Of course, you were nervous. <laughs> Like course. crazy. <laughs> uh, I'm still nervous, you know, <laughs> for a performance here. All right. But. Yeah, I remember going to the, uh, there was kind of a, a holding area oh. where there were so many different people, um, all of these people who would kind of be on the show throughout the next coming months. Uh. And um, yeah, we were kind of mingling with all of these different people and you could hear certain people, you know, warming up or doing stuff for the camera. Um, it was, yeah, and it was wild. And then eventually you're kind Keep of on. called out uh, <laughs> to uh, the, the Apollo, the Hammersmith Apollo. Uh. And yeah, we, we waited backstage for a little while. And I just remember kind of walking onto that stage and it's kind of a oh, blank well, from well, there. Well. Yeah, it's, uh, you know, you see the judges kind of bathed in the inc incredible amount of spotlights. Uh -huh. And yeah, it's, I just remember getting up there and actually singing the singing part, I don't even remember. Yeah, then you it's sang. Every, yeah. Usually, yeah, you forget the performance because you're nervous about everything yeah, else exactly. that's happening around you. Yeah. Yeah. And then they screamed. Yeah, and then people went crazy. All right. And, and how did that feel? I mean, there's there's no real way to explain that feeling to someone. Oh. The uh, the idea of um, being accepted by so many people because it's not just you know, people are excited. It is that acceptance. It's yeah, yeah people kind of understanding what you're about That's and wonderful. yeah it's wonderful thanks for sharing with us uh, Simon Cowell is a cul cultural icon throughout sure the world is. and in Canada of course uh, my, uh, my our audience would hate me if I don't ask you how was he I mean this is a thing that I say often oh. um, and I I think that it is very useful in life to um, rid yourself of idols and um, yeah I think that thinking of people as celebrities and as public figures is, it can be quite detrimental, not just to you, but to those people. That's beautiful. With that said. said. <laughs> no, that's beautifully said. Yeah, I so actually, I, you, don't, you, you shouldn't idolize. Yeah. They're humans and, and they're talented. Yeah, and yes. Simon Cowell was, um, 
human. Definitely a human. Nice. Yeah, a very, a very interesting human. You can tell that he knows that he's, you know, he is Simon it. Simon Cowell. <laughs> But he also doesn't, you know, detract from Beautiful. the importance of anyone else in the room. Do you keep in touch with uh, the BGT? I, I actually team? haven't. It's, um, yeah, <laughs> once once you kind of go on the show, once you're out of the show, it's, um, yeah, it's yeah. kind of pretty much. Yeah. Um, Jonathan Antoine, uh, sorry, Jonathan and Charlotte in the following years went on to record two successful albums, Together and Perhaps Love. Then the duo split in 2014. After that, followed the solo career. Let's talk about that. Well, um, in 2014, I released my first uh, solo album, which is called Tenore, oh. um, which I can hardly even remember the repertoire on it. It <laughs> feels like so long ago. But, um, yeah, that was, that was with Sony. Um, oh. And so, of course, there was still considerable record label, you know, um, influence there. And then... In 2016, I released my kind of sophomore um, solo album, Believe, which was an independent studio. Uh -huh. um, so that was a little more kind of my thing. And yeah, both of those are actually things that I'm really proud of. And yeah. I think that the real thing with an album, for an artist at least, is to have that time capsule of, of that period in your life. Nice. And yeah, so having, represents you personally. Yeah, yeah, and having that snapshot of who I was in 2014, so long ago, that uh, that's really invaluable to me, yeah. actually. Nice. Um, I know you've told the story of why did you go solo, but uh, share it a little bit. Um, I just kind of felt that the there time. was more for me to do yeah. as as a solo artist, pretty much. Yeah. It's um, there's a lot more. There are a lot more songs for a tenor than for a tenor and a soprano. Yeah. pretty oh, much. Yeah. Uh, you have performed with Placido Domingo. Uh, you have sang uh, recently, maybe in a, a year old, uh, a haunting rendition of uh, Unchained Melody, a song I love. And you have recorded a cover of one of my most favorite songs of all time, Hallelujah, which I actually own every recording by any artist that have ever been made, and yours, of course. <laughs> And Thank yours you. stands shoulder to shoulder with the best of them, Thank including you. the master, Leonard Cohen. So, Thank good, good work, sir. <laughs> I, I, pray. I Thank listen you. to it a lot. <laughs> um, I saw an, an excellent photo on your Twitter recently of you standing in front of the doors of Abbey Road Studios, yes. the iconic Abbey Road Studios. Yes, indeed. Tell us about the feeling in that space. It must have, like, the energy, <sighs> the spirit of the people it's, that it, went behind before It is you. incredible. I mean, the, the entire kind of album because uh, this whole show that we're doing is being turned into an album as well. Oh. That is actually kind of very closely related to the Beatles. The orchestral recordings were done at Air Studios, which are the studios that were established by George Martin, who was oh, wow. Beatles producer. So there's that element. And then um, in between those orchestral recordings, we went into Abbey Road oh. and um, we had the famous piano that was used uh, at the end of oh. Day in the Life. Wow. Um, that's on a recording of Caruso, which you can all uh, expect to hear. Oh, wow. And, yeah, so it's just, um, again, it's part of that idol thing where there's, uh, as much as I, I would like to believe that I am kind of this... Immune you to know, idol. Uh, immune to <laughs> idolatry kind of stuff like that, being in that kind of room, being in that space... It's incredible. It's what history. It's yeah. th those, pe those people did so much. Yeah, exactly. It's more than, more than just idolatry. idolatry. It's, yeah. it, it is history, Feeling their musical energy. history, yeah. right? Good. Good. Um, uh, let's talk about the concert uh, you're about to do. I love what the Mervish, I'm going to read this, what, what they called it, and you're. Crossover British tenor and star of Britain's Got Talent, 24-year-old vocal sensation Jonathan Antoine brings two concerts to the Winter Garden Theatre, showcasing the music that has shaped him as an artist, from Disney anthems and popular songs to the world's greatest areas. That sounds like a wonderful music musical night. Uh, what will your audience be treated to? What's the show? What's, what are you singing in the show? I, I have said this numerous times now, but this is the biggest show that I've ever done. This oh. is going to be the best show that nice. I've ever done, which... Oh, I've, no, you're going to be doing a lot more bigger well, ones. <laughs> hope, yeah, in the future, now, yeah. all things crossed. <laughs> I, um, but up until now, this will be the largest oh. production that I've ever been a part of. Yeah. And 
yeah, it's all been off, kind of off of my own back. I've got a lot of people that I've kind of handpicked oh, uh, nice. to help me out, but it's... What, kind of, what songs? A couple well, of them, a few of them. Uh, in terms of songs, the, the whole thing is split up um, much like a play, uh -huh. because I, I kind of feel like nowadays, for some reason, concerts are split up uh, in the middle, where I personally enjoy like a three-act structure more. Uh -huh. um, and so this first act is going to be primarily Disney songs and kind of stuff that I really enjoyed as a kid, which in my head is kind of... Um, it relates back to the idea of like a struggling child, someone mm. who is you know disenfranchised with the world, mm. um, and their eventual kind of triumph and their story and their potential success. Okay. That's and that's just the first section. Okay. That's just the first part of this. Okay. So, uh, <laughs> and that's going to have stuff like "Go the Distance," oh. uh, "Man Out of You" from Mulan. It's nice. like the actual classics, the okay. best Disney songs. All right. The middle section, the second section, is going to be kind of the classic, uh, almost world songbook, the American songbook even. Um, Unchained Melody is going to be in there, of course. Oh, you can sing. Cool. Um, that, yeah, which is one of my favourite songs to sing, and one of the most requested songs, uh, just by, you know, uh, on social media. You can and stuff tell like that. The, the video online that yeah, of you singing it. it. You can tell you're so into it. Yeah. Oh, I love. I, yeah. I absolutely love the song. Beautiful. And the final section is going to be the big classical arias, which most of which are technically a secret right now. All right. <laughs> so you have to come and see the, the, the concert. You do. Whenever, wherever he is in the world, come yeah. go see his concert. But if you can't make it here, yeah. all of that repertoire is going to be on an album. So uh, yeah. So when will the album be released? I'm not entirely sure not yet, yet, but yeah. it will be very soon after the oh. concert. Uh, where uh, is this your first time in Toronto? It's not actually. This no. is my third time, technically. Oh, right. um, uh, when you were in Toronto, did you get a chance to see it? <laughs> not particularly. No? For the oh. most part, when I You're when I visit anywhere, yeah, it's uh, it's mostly work, and I don't get much of a chance oh, to no. uh, experience the actual landmarks. But um, yeah, I mean. In terms of um, the people who are really kind of supporting this, that's how um, I got here. The, okay. uh, the, the, first, the second time, actually, that I was in Toronto was to perform for someone who is um, a very significant benefactor for this entire show, and without whom this whole thing wouldn't be able to happen. No. So, yeah, uh, Toronto, Canada, has uh, played a big part in, uh, hopefully, what will be the next chapter Beautiful. in my story. Well, I, I hope you get to see it a little bit then. I One hope time. so too. Uh, where else are you touring? Um, for, for this show, it's just going to be the two shows in Toronto on June 6th and 8th. Okay. But um, after that, after the release of the album, we're hoping to tour that and kind of bring it all across the States, hopefully oh. across more of Canada and maybe even back into Europe and hope, ideally across the entire world, right? <laughs> Uh, what are you, um, uh, where would you like to see yourself as an artist in the future, after you're done with this? Or it's, one step at a time? Yeah, it's, it's really tough because w when I was kind of 18 to 20 years old, I felt like I'd done everything that I wanted to do. Uh -huh. I, I, you know, I performed at the Royal Albert Hall, I, you know, I did all these crazy things, I, I also got to hang out with my friends in between, so I felt like I'd done all of this stuff, but then kind of looking at it, there's still so, so much that I want to do. I, um, yeah, I want to release like 10 more albums. <laughs> I, nice. th th I have so much material, so many things, so many weird things that I want to do, stuff that people would never expect. Um, and hopefully that's going to be the, the chapter after this one. But right now, <laughs> I'm focusing on, on this one. Focus on this one. Uh, before we wrap up this segment, I want to touch on this. Art brings us closer together. Mm. Um, you could be watching a film in Japan, England, yeah. and Canada and feel the same emotions. Uh, music is even more powerful because you don't even know, need to know, to know the meanings of, this, of the yeah. words or the, to, to speak the language. Um, what is your take on the power of music? Well, <laughs> that's a big one. I mean, uh -huh. I've, I've been pondering kind of, you know, why does a person make art? Is it for that self-gratification of making something that they enjoy? Huh. Or is it for other people to consume and to feel something? And for me personally, I think that most of the things that I make are made for others. Hmm. And I would like very much if, uh, if others felt something from, from me just being able to do what I love. Yes. Yeah, that's... 
it's a crazy exchange, the fact that I get to do the thing that I love and then that also hopefully, uh, in, even in some minor way, improves someone's life. That's actually that's a great uh, little word, exchange. I was with a friend at a concert recently and I said to him, it must be so powerful for the artist on stage to feel everybody all of a sudden singing together and yeah. all the spirit kind of translating the whole venue. It is, it, it is it's, it's an exchange powerful. of energy. Yeah. You, yes, you give something and you are given something so incredible in return. Well, good luck. Thank we'll continue you. with that. Uh, we're going to take a little break, a little commercial break, and we'll be back with Jonathan Antoine. Faith was strong, but you needed proof. You saw her bathing on the roof. Her beauty in the moonlight overthrew you. She tied you to her kitchen chair. She broke your throne and she cut your hair. back with the wonderful Jonathan Antoine. I actually hear that you're shooting uh, this, this show as well for We are. TV? The, the entire thing is going to be shot. There's also going to be a documentary kind of nice. the behind the scenes of all of this. Even, you know, the recording that we've already done, that's all been filmed. Oh. So every kind of second of this is... Um, it's so watch there. for that broadcast, watch for the album, watch for the documentary. So <laughs> many things coming up. <laughs> yeah, if you can't make period. it to the, uh, to the concert, there's not only going to be the album, but this recorded documentary. And he's very cheery on social media, so follow yeah. him. <laughs> yeah, go ahead if, uh, if you feel like seeing some, uh, some very positive stuff yes, pretty yeah. much all the time. That's me, John yeah. Antoine on Twitter. Um, like recently I discovered a wonderful book you have written. Um, a children's book, to be exact. Yeah. And um, in this, I, I thought it has a, re a really wonderful message. In this day and age of social media, unfortunately, um, some of the bullying that we experienced in school is being carried online as yeah. well. Um, why don't you tell us a little bit about the book? I know it's unique in the way it presents. Uh, the, I think it's three parts. Uh, who did you write it with? All that sort of stuff. Well, this, uh, yeah, it's a collaborative effort. And, what is it called? Um, first? Uh, it's called Jonathan the Porcupine, so it's very obviously, you know, <laughs> uh, at least slightly based on um, my kind of experience. Uh -huh. um, and in fact, there are some things that are very direct. I, I you know, I try and keep those things uh, a little bit secret, so there's a little bit of air of mystery there. But mm. it is um, the story of, you know, essentially of a young man who is uh, ostracized for the way that he appears. You know, porcupines are traditionally quite spiky and the most of the characters in the book are, you know, the rest of the woodland creatures, kind of squirrels and stuff. And so that Make obvious kind of metaphor, yeah, yeah. is um, it's right there, I think. Yeah. I think that by having that metaphor be so, you know, right in your face, I think that anyone can kind of understand the story, the actual, the allegory behind the thing. Awesome. Um, well, part of my interest in chatting with you, uh, other than you being a wonderful performer Thank and you. artist, uh, is that many in the LGBT community are bullied uh, when they're young, and it carries on sometimes into adulthood. So I felt that you probably have a kinship with yeah. somebody who gets judged for something that they cannot help. Yeah. And I that's a terrible, terrible thing. Um, yeah. I've, I've, I've always been uh, a, a huge proponent of LGBT plus uh, rights and, yeah, everything. It's just makes absolutely no sense to me to uh, judge you. and restrict anyone based on something that not only they can't control but that is it's not abnormal well, thank you for being an ally we like uh, always I, yeah. I will I will always be an ally thank you um, we know that words hurt and um, when I was a kid too I used to be called skinny little skeleton it took me a long time to get that out of my head yeah. and move on with my life um, if I remember the shy, uncomfortable 17-year-old you that was on the stage and the wonderful, uh, 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 confident uh, guy that I've been seeing in interviews and in performances. What happened in the seven years in between? A lot. <laughs> yes. Uh, it's, um, it's, just, it's been a wild ride. I mean, from that very first moment, from as soon as uh, 
as soon as we'd gone on stage, people already kind of knew about the the whole thing. It was um, we had reporters come to our door uh, before it was even aired on TV. Wow. So from from the get go, I've had to kind of adapt and understand how to interact with people and how to best get a message across. Um, and yeah, throughout the seven years, or, or, almost exactly like my singing, uh, I have in tandem been training to um, training be able yourself to, inside. Yeah, it's to beautiful. speak to people, to um, get my message across as effectively as possible. And um, yeah, I think just in doing that, that brings you a lot more confidence to have a message to say, to have something that you truly believe in, will uh, will always give you a little boost. So we can grow from a place and become into Absolutely. something else. Yeah. yeah, it's good. Well, here, and here's, here's a wonderful here example are. of that. Um, do you know of International Day of Pink? Are you aware of it? Oh, I, th uh, I think I've heard of it. It's, it's a day where people wear yeah. a pink t-shirt uh, to stop bullying and homophobia and transphobia and all that. What else do you think uh, would be great ideas to do to stop bullying in the world? Oh, that's... I mean, If the, we can think yeah, of the, something. The key to all of this is education, in my that's opinion. Okay. Um, if those people who choose to discriminate against others were better educated about the struggles of those people, of others, yes. I yes. sincerely think that we would be in a better place in the world in general. But uh, it comes back to something that is very important to me, and that is imagining others complexly. To mm. think about other people and realize that every single person when you're in a busy city street, all of those hundreds, maybe thousands of people that are just walking past you, every single one of them has as varied and storied Story. an experience as, as you're having. You're that very deep, man. Is very <laughs> I, I do that I, when I'm in, on a train, whatever, I look at people and I, I yeah. try to realize that they all have a life and it, it, anything that I do may affect their life yeah. sort of thing and we have to be aware of each other. Yeah, I mean, when you just see someone, it's almost like they're a caricature, they're yeah. just an image almost because that's all the, the, the sensory input that you yeah. have from them. Yeah. But Make them yeah. more than just an image. Exactly. Make them a human. Make every single yeah. person that you encounter more than just an image. Oh, so hopefully anybody who is listening to this will learn how to treat others that way. Um, uh, when I posted, uh, speaking of LGBT, uh, when I posted about uh, chatting with you, I got a lot of fans <laughs> on Facebook. I did, I did, did you know that you have a big fan base in the community? I, I was not entirely aware. Well, I mean, there you are. You do. Hopefully. Everybody's you know. like, oh my God, I remember from the show. Oh my God, I remember from the show. <laughs> That's great. Uh, yeah, I mean, as I say, I've always been an ally. I think it's ridiculous to discriminate against anyone, really. Yeah. And right yeah, that makes me very happy. Um, um, the community in England, the LGBT community, what do you know of it? Um, 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 tell us anything if you may know. <laughs> I mean, I, I, get, I have a lot of uh, LGBT friends. plus friends, yeah. Um, I mean, for the most part, my, uh, I have a lot of trans friends who okay. are from the States, okay. and they experience significant struggles. They do. Um, they do. That's, uh, that's one of our... Last main fights, hopefully, in the community is yeah. to, to act, advocate for trans rights. Yeah, absolutely. Hopefully, yeah, that is one of those final bastions yeah. where we can yeah, break Yeah, we gained through. the gay rights in the 60s and 70s. Yeah. We, we gained our rights now. We have to stand by other people and try to get exactly. rights as well. Exactly. Well, yeah. beautiful. Um, let's take a little break, and we will be back with the wonderful and very deep <laughs> Jonathan <laughs> Antoine. <laughs> Jonathan Antoine. We're going to get a little later now and chat about family, upbringing. We'd like to get to know you. Where okay. were you born? Uh, yeah. Siblings, all that sort of stuff. Well, uh, I was born in Essex, which you might not it. expect. Um, and yeah, I've, I've, uh, I've lived there my entire life. Uh, I've moved house once to a house about a mile away. So uh -huh. the whole time I've been in Essex. And um, yeah, I've always lived with my mum, dad, sister. Uh -huh. And, uh, you have a sister? I oh. do. My, my sister, who is here today, oh. um, Charlotte, 
her name's Charlotte as well. So I was going to say, okay, Charlotte was confusing. not your sister. Right? Yeah. <laughs> things do get very confusing in that respect. <laughs> um, but yeah, they, they have been uh, the largest contributing factor to my success, I would say. They've been supporters. Yeah, they um, ever since, you know, day one. I mean, um, even in that sense of, of thinking, you know, always have something to fall back on just in case... Uh, you can't end up doing music because music music is a notoriously difficult business to oh, get into. Right. Yeah. Even in that respect, they were very supportive of Fair me. Fair like that, though. Oh, yeah. uh, my mom kept asking me, when am I going to get a real job? <laughs> <laughs> uh, what, kind of, what kind of little kid were you? Uh, oh. Funny? Crazy? Yeah, I, <laughs> I mean, a lot of the stories that uh, are told seem to be quite funny. Uh -huh. um, <laughs> Yeah, I uh, I think I was kind of a, a hyperactive kid. Were you? Yeah, yeah, I kind of wanted to do everything all the time. Uh, um, sweet. <laughs> kids are crazy. Kids are crazy. Um, how would you like to see your uh, personal journey in life take shape? Oh, um, so far I am uh, I'm very pleased with uh, the way that my journey has gone. Um, I've I've been able to, through a lot of support and a lot of help. Um, I've been able to kind of lift myself out of very dark places and I suppose that the only thing that I really would like to do is to uh, help other people come out of those places as well. Beautiful. Um, what inspires you in life, Jonathan? Every, everything. Every single thing. When, as to when I wake up and I see that the sky is still there, the clouds are still mm. moving by, I am inspired by that. The very fact that any of us are living and breathing on this earth, the tiny, infinitesimally small chance that any of us could have been born, that inspires me to no end. Is that actually such, such a great truth? We could have not been here talking yeah, today, exactly. but we are, but we and are. we have to be inspired. Somehow, yeah. somehow we are here. That's, Isn't that that's, crazy? That's beautiful. Um, now, we do this at the show to wrap up. We ask quick questions. Our audience oh, love God. it. So if, if, uh, answer whatever first come to mind, if you're stuck. Okay. Uh, your favorite season of the year? Season? Uh, probably winter. Winter? Like really? Wow. Uh, do you have any pets? I have three cats. You have cats? Polly, Pandora, and Willow. <laughs> Lovely. You got two nice cats. <laughs> uh, what does, uh, well, actually you almost described it, but what does a nice morning start look like for you? What do you do first in the morning to get yourself going? My average morning would begin around 3 p.m. Uh, I roll out of bed. <laughs> <laughs> and, um, Good guy. And kind of uh, bum around my entire day, do nothing. Uh, That's my ideal <laughs> Have a nice day. <laughs> Well, hey, you deserve those because you're busy and you're working very hard, so you deserve Thank it. You. Um, who do you listen to? Um, I I'm currently listening to the ba uh, the album Hail Stan by Periphery, which just came out. Um, that's kind of my my staple at the moment. I like oh. Archspire or Archspire. Oh. Um, these are all really really heavy metal bands. So. You That's listen to heavy metal. I listen to an very operatic heavy metal. singer who listens to heavy metal. Who? What about the um, old days, the 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 classics? Um, I mean, for for the most part, all I listen to is is this modern heavy metal. But mm -hmm. um, in terms of classic, I, I mean, I love any Elvis stuff. I think Elvis, that right. he is probably one of you know the greatest performers who right. ever lived. Stuff like that. I love the Beatles. I mean, I like all music. You like music. I think that any piece of music is an expression. Even if it's like, like a, a, a pencil hitting a table from a 14-year-old yeah. in his bedroom. Oh. That is Somebody a form of expression. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, and... To say something, that's actually... Exactly, yeah. yeah. Um, if you weren't performing, what job would you be doing? I don't think I would be doing one. <laughs> um, you like performing. I'm, that's actually that's a, then, then you are in the right doing the right thing I, in life. I cannot imagine doing anything else. Wow, that's a beautiful answer. Um, I very much love old British sitcoms. Do you watch oh, any? And um, do you have any favorites? My grandfather many years ago gave me the full script to uh, Forty Towers, oh my God. which was my favorite. And, uh, <laughs> I've oh, seen it a million times. I love times. it so much. Uh, on on the way to Canada, on the way here, I was watching. Um, Flying Circus, Monty huh. Python. I absolutely love. I mean, not a sitcom, but a comedy. Um, yeah, stuff like I'm that. I'm all over YouTube trying to find any British yeah. thing that I can I mean, find. <laughs> I also I like um, the, uh, who uh, the vicar of uh, the vicar of uh, oh yeah, vicar of Dibley. <laughs> incredible <laughs> I love stuff. Her. But I I actually like um, old American game shows. Weirdly oh. enough, um, I think it's um, what's my line? What's oh, my line is a enough. great show. Uh -huh. the, the full things on YouTube. So uh -huh. if, uh, if you like stuff like that, <laughs> check it out. <laughs> um, Bristol and Blackpool are two of my favorite spots in England. 
What are your favourite songs? Um, in England specifically, I mean, obviously I, no. I love my hometown, Essex. Uh, Essex! Essex. <laughs> <laughs> um, and I, I also, I actually quite like Bristol. I like that it's by the sea. So you've been um, to Bristol? I have yeah. indeed. I think oh. I've been everywhere in the UK oh, nice. at this point. Oh. Uh, but I also, I love Scotland as well. I mean, I want to go to Scotland. Oh, I, I, I would highly recommend yeah, it. Yeah, I just watch movies or whatever and see yeah, all the greenery. And I the, mean, the, yeah, yeah, even for such a small island, yeah. there is a lot of nice green open space yeah, in the yeah. UK, Beautiful. which I really appreciate. Uh, outside of England, what city have you fallen in love with? Uh, I love LA. Personally, yeah. I, uh, it's my home away so from you, home. So you, yeah, you've been and you've performed there. <laughs> I have, even though it's very hot over there, oh. and I do prefer the cold. And a lot of people dislike LA, definitely. Oh. But do I, you um, like it? I cool. found, I found my kind of second home there. Very nice. Um, what message would you have for our LGBTQ community? Um, I love you very much. Please stay safe out there, and um, I believe in you. That's a great message. And what message do you have for the world in general? I think the same thing, pretty much. <laughs> Stay safe. Stay safe, and um, don't do anything naughty. <laughs> or do. <laughs> oh, hey, as long That's as it doesn't it. hurt anyone else, <laughs> exactly. go for it. Thank you so much for being here. Thank you. I Thanks really for having me. Your time. Cheers. I appreciate your time. Talent and art transcends ages and communities. Bullying is a terrible thing we must stop in this world. And Jonathan Antoine is a talent that we're just starting to see the beginning of, all what we're going to see from him. I hope you got all of that and more on this half an hour that we spent together. Keep the love going, love one another, and thank you for spending time with us on the couch. Thank you.